Hey, welcome to another episode of Freedom on Fire. This is your boy, Robert Bob TV Brown. Let's have a chat. Let's have a talk. Shout out to my homeboy, Jamal Thomas. Uh, and uh, Tim Black, Nico House, A.J. Goodman, Hard Bastard, uh, um, BS Man, Holly Seeger, uh, Independent Media. Um, and I'm just Rob. I'm just a commentator. And uh, I do want to talk to you about some things. Now, I'm just finishing up a video that talked about um, Charlottesville, Charlotte, Virginia. I talked about a video on Trump first so-called disavowalment and the statement that he made where he basically said this. He basically said um, on all sides. And... He, there is some truth to that, and I talk about that in the video because there's more than just one side that's involved in this situation. Um, there's multiple involvements in this situation, but it was one side that actually, actually, aggressively incite violence that led to death. Violence that led to death. And that was from the radical white supremacist terrorists uh, and one of them happened to be ride, driving that car that mowed over a bunch of people and killed one young lady now I'm going to tell you a little about from about Virginia I'm not going to go into the history of Virginia um, but I moved here from, to New York from Virginia I uh, stayed in a small town called Suffolk, Virginia uh, Virginia, a lot of the rural towns are steep in the heritage of the Confederate. A lot of people in that hometown, they get along. Things have changed. I'm from a place called Florida. Heavily redneck area. Beach area, yet there's some country area and rednecks is your best friend sometimes. Sometimes your best friend could drive a pickup truck with a, with a big old rebel flag, but um, he's your homeboy. At least he seemed to be your homeboy all through these years. Do I question that? I, I don't know what's in people's heart. I only can know about their actions. Here's one thing I know about Donald Trump. The way he started his campaign painted the picture of him being a racist. Whether that was intentional or not, I'm not going to debate that. The picture that was painted to me is that you're against this, this, and that. I tried to go back and listen to the tapes and listen to the whole tape and hear what you actually said because I know TV does sound bites and snippets and things like that. And they can make you look like you said something horrible when you didn't say something horrible. So I went back and listened to the tapes, something most people don't do. And I saw the statement about the Mexicans. And I advise you to go watch the whole tape and come to your own conclusion. I came to my conclusion. Uh, I saw the statement that he made to black America saying, Hey, I'm going to do better than you than any president. What the blank you got to lose? That right there was condescending. Whether he was trying to do it out of kind of his heart, that right there was condescending. Now, we all know Donald Trump is not a politician. He's a... A uh, 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 meaty mouth businessman, salesman. You know, he don't sell cars; he sell homes, and he's good at it. And made millions, and I'll end up being in Forbes magazine under billions. And I'm quite sure Forbes magazines will will check you out to see if you really made billions. So, I'm going to trust Forbes in that aspect to say that he genuinely became a billionaire at one point. Whether he's one or not, I, I don't care nothing about that. Now. Now, whether that um, last apology was um, uh, straight from the heart of Donald Trump, I don't judge people hard. I can't. All I can do is come to my conclusion and say I don't believe him or I do believe him. I don't know what to believe. The point is, is you got to convince me that you're not a racist. And that is bad, dude. That is bad. And it looked like you're going to be spending the rest of your presidency trying to prove that you're something 
that you're not supposed to be. I wouldn't say something that you're not, but something that you're not supposed to be as president. You're supposed to be the president of the United States, the melting pot of the world, multicultural land. That's what you're supposed to be. But you're spending most of your time trying to convince people. I People say, well, he never disavowed David Duke, blah, blah, blah. I've seen the videos. I got the videos of him uh, disavowing David Duke. Uh, I'll probably pull him up on the Bob TV channel so you can see how he disavowed the Klan and David Duke before. Now, it's a last-minute deal he did. I don't know if he was pressured to do that or not, but the point is he did. Should I question whether he meant it or not? I'm not that man. I don't know whether he's meant it or not. I only can assume that he didn't mean it. Just like I can assume that he mean, meant it. I don't know. Now, let's get into the opportunity that this creates. And I'm going to put on my glasses because I, um, I can't see right now. I'm sleepy. All right, so the whole debacle was messed up. Okay, these guys are planning these rallies all across the United States and probably the world some. And they're trying to show their dominance. Number one, if you know these guys are going to be out there protesting, who said you have to come and participate or push back or things like that? Don't give them the press. It will feel alone when you're out there marching by yourself with nobody to watch you. I wouldn't even, the press is, going to, the press is involved in this thing. People going out there protesting. I wouldn't say you're necessarily involved. You should counter protest. But, um,. I'm thinking if you if we never give them the opportunity to let you do your march, um, that's fine. You have a right. This is America. You got a right to rally, the right to protest. You got a right to speech. This is America. Now, I don't think you have the right to incite violence. I don't think you have the right to, to spew hatred to the point where it can lead. I mean, in your speech, I don't think your speech should spew enough hatred it caused multiple t people, I can see one fool, but multiple people to take on that hate and viscerally use it against you who are not part of that particular group. Um, case in point, um, the guy who drove the car, what motivated him to drive the car to run over these people? We don't know, and I guess we're going to find out because this is going to be a murder trial. Uh, he may get off with second degree murder, but it's still a murder trial or second degree manslaughter, which is a little lesser than murder. I don't know where, why they make it the, the difference. And he's in Virginia at that. And he's in Charlottesville. Now, Charlottesville, I've been to Charlottesville many a times. As, um, I actually have business that I do in Charlottesville um, with the regional jail centers there. So Charlottesville is pretty much um, a, 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 a quiet, old school Confederate town. You know, that's where... Uh, um, Jefferson and uh, um, Monticello, you know, Jungle Fever, you know, all that stuff. And but it has grown to be a culture, a city that take racism head on. The governing bodies in that area, they don't run from their racist past. They want to confront it and get rid of it. And that's why the speech was being told. And that was the purpose for them guys being there. They want to get rid of the Confederate statue of Robert Lee. Now, honestly speaking, them, them statues been around for I don't know how long, man. <laughs> it don't remind me of racism. I, I don't let it. Well, it do remind me of racism. It do remind me of the dominant of the South and the Confederacy. But I never let that bother me. I mean, I, I've seen plenty of statues. You know, places I worked, I come out the door, there was a big old Confederate statue in um, North Carolina in um, Gatesville. And those statues do represent a horrible class for black people. And when a whole bunch of Chinese, wasn't a whole bunch of Jews, it wasn't a whole bunch of Russians, went all that, it was black people, slaves. Do I think these Confederate statues need to be taken down? I think they need to be taken down. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't represent the beacon of the city. I think now. Do I think it should be torn down and crushed? I mean, you do whatever you do. It's part of history, and that's a part of history that need to be revisited. And those statues do remind you that there is a horrible past in that history, uh, especially for black people. And we need to get educated from our past, not through white colonialism thinking, 
but through real culture thinking from a black man's point of view. And I think the white culture should learn from the black man's point of view of slavery so they can be empathetic and sympathetic with our plight. Just like we've been put in position where we were empathetic and sympathetic with your flight of you coming from England, from Great Britain, to come to the United States to start, so-called start a new country. I don't know how you're going to start a new country when there was already people here. So I think the statue should remain in a museum somewhere as a symbolism of the horribleness of the civil rights, I mean, the civil war and um, these leaders. I mean, we were divided. The South was his own country, and the North was his own country. Uh, so, and there was fighting over territory. So, you know, I'm not a history teacher. Go and, you know, pick up a book, read. That's not my job to do all that stuff for you. Uh, so, I think the statue should be taken down. Um, some people think it should be totally destroyed. Hey, to me, it doesn't bother me if they put it in a museum and teach the history of that person on that horse in that time and use it to better people. Better people. And let them know they actually made statues to these races, bigoted generals. And people actually wanted to fight to keep these races, bigoted generals, as a beacon of the city when that city is trying to move forward. Charlotte, Virginia is trying to move forward. The vice mayor is a black man, the mayor is a white man. You got many politicians that are, are color or taking leadership positions in that town. So, and, and this is happening all across the South. There is a takeover. Right now, tr these statues don't mean much to me. People think it should, but it don't. What means to me is the point is these same fools out there marching for black hatred toward black, for Jews, for Chinese, for uh, Islamic. Uh, uh, people of Islamic faith these are the same people that are still struggling for jobs they still need a minimum wage they still uh, a, a, a living wage they still need health care they still need jobs and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter taking down a freaking statue is not going to give you the $15 an hour the jobs and none of that stuff keeping the statue is not going to give you that either and we're on the wrong side of the spectrum. <sighs> Let me calm down. <laughs> the point is, we've been duped into this culture fight. And I just mentioned in the last video, there are people who are funding to see these things take place. Sure, I do believe that there may be funding from George Soros, but I do believe there should be maybe funding from the Cole brothers. But the point is, as I protested, and most of the real true protesters who protest in real true protests, peaceful protests, are not being funded. And if we're being funded, I want to know where my check, where my money. I ain't get paid. I must have been in the wrong line. So, no, I went out there because I protest what was going on. I protest the wrong, and I protest for what's right. And most people who protest, that's what's going on. Now, obviously, the ideology of white supremacy is that these people feel like they need to take their country back. You really need to take your country back, bruh, young lady. This wasn't your country in the first place. You took over and dominated. And you brutalized the um, Native American, Indian, and indigenous people. And you chained and you brought people over here to build the country on behalf of you. And if you look at the democratic of ownership with black, with the black culture, what have we taken? One to five percent of the real estate, one to five percent of the land, one percent we run one to five percent of corporations in America. What have we taken away from you? No, it's not that point. The point is we're we're come, you've been teaching white dominancy for so long that you don't like the fact that we're becoming we're really literally being equal with you and you don't want to see us equal with you. Yet at the same time, there is some faction of black nationalism that think black people are superior to whites, Chinese, and all that. And like I said before, that's up for debate. But when you use that to dominate, to terrorize, to brutalize people because you're supposed to be serious, uh, uh, superior, that is terrorism. 
That is terrorism. And when you incite violence and do violence in the name of that, you should be charged as a terrorist, just like any other terrorist in any country. You should be put in the same statue that bin Laden was in. Now, where I'm going with this, <laughs> I'm going by my heart and being led, and I want to be very careful and very cautious on how to deal with this. Now, I don't believe and I do not support and I would not give lip peace or service or show videos to people who incite violence thinking that they're doing the right thing. And it's not just radical white supremacist terrorism. There's radical groups that promote terrorism too. If you're going out looking for fascists to beat their brains in when they have not incited violence against you at that point, you're no different from them. My Black Matter, so-called Black Lives Matter, I know Black Lives Matter, the real true Black Matters, Lives Matters are peaceful protesters. The history of it was all for the simple fact that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired of our black men and women being looked at as second citizens to the point that you feel like you can just do whatever you want to them, beat them, bruise them, kill them. That's why we holler. Black lives matter. Not that white lives don't matter. Not that Latino lives don't matter. We all the black lives matter. It's because we in the totem pole and we're trying to voice this just to come up. Just to be put on that even field. Sure, white lives matter. And I heard these white supremacists walking around saying white lives matter. Nobody ever doubted that white lives didn't matter. But white lives are not at the bottom of the totem pole of, of jobs. The totem pole of um, uh, running businesses, the total pole of um, 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 leading corporations, the totem pole, or you name it. The black man, the black woman is still at the bottom of the uh, pile, and we're trying to say we're equal, our lives matter. Why you think you better than us? Because surely you're not. A bat can hit your head and bust your skull wide open as a white supremacist, the same way as a bat can bust your skull open as a black nationalist or a black protester who is out there protesting peacefully. And I do not believe that you can go around and just bash people's head in and not expect an uh, answer to that. I do not support people who incite violence, but I will always support people in the opportunity to defend themselves when they're being attacked. And we got people right now who think that they can go out and incite violence. And in that case, I'm believing that there's going to be some pieces of legislation that not limit free speech. Free speech should not be limited. The right to assemble should not be limited. But when you start talking about dominating, oppressing, brutalizing, murdering, shackling chains, when you start talking that talk, no matter what side you're on, you need to not ever be able to go out and protest. You should be stripped of your ordinance to go out and march if you're going to be doing that. And if we find out that you're doing that, because somebody always around with a cell phone, and we got that on video of you protesting like that, then you can't use the streets, you can't use public place. You can use your freaking backyard that you own and hope that you get a bunch of people out to your backyard. That's it. But if you're going to spew hate speeches and incite people uh, about dominating, oppressing, depressing, brutalizing, harming, using violence, killing people, your ordinance, your opportunity to get ordinance to march, to protest, need to be revoked for life. For life. You shouldn't have the right to go out there and speak about that and protest and march about that. You shouldn't have that right. Now hopefully people put pieces piece of legislation to stop that. If you're going to do it, it's going to be peaceful. Like I said, some people, this is America. If you've got the freedom to believe that you're more superior than another person, go for it, hoss. That can happen on any side. 
There are black people who believe that just as much as white people believe that, just as much as my uh, Aztec Mexi Mexican heritage brothers believe that. That we're gods and everybody else is peasants. Really? And if you want to believe that mess, go ahead and believe it. It's up to the de debate and don't get mad if somebody debates you and prove you wrong. But to use that to dominate, to brutalize, to harm, to kill, to use that. That, is un that should be unconstitutional. That should be banned. And we should not be able to see this. And number two, people. You don't have to give them people any lip service. You don't have to show up to any of their events. Let them fools march alone. Now, that's not what I was supposed to have been talking about. Um, but I'm done. That's just my speech. Um, I'm not going to go into my next video in this because I'm already spent 21 minutes talking about this. All right? You have a right to protest, but you don't have the right to protest mess. You don't have the right to go around inciting violence, talking about dominating and brutalizing and, 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 and suppressing people. You don't have that. You shouldn't have that right. Putting back people back in the position that they once was before as slaves and things like that. You don't have that right. Lastly, and secondly, I am not for people thinking that they can go around and bash people head and not expecting the answer to that, not expecting to get them get their behind knocked out. No, 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 no. I only got two cheeks. The scripture told me to turn the other one once you hit it. Alright? I might be good enough to say, hey, some people not that good, some people not that well tuned, somebody some people not that disciplined, and they ain't gonna let you hit the first cheek. If you look like you about to hit them, they're gonna they're gonna knock you out first. But let's say I gave you the other cheek. I only got one cheek. I'm only going to lay down and do something peaceful one time. After that, I got another cheek for you. It's a lower cheek. You can kiss my behind. I'm not going to let you sit there and brutalize me. I'm going to beat. I'm going to knock you out. I'm not going to let nobody um, dominate and brutalize my people. Yet, I'm not going to let my people brutalize and dominate other people. That is not right. So, you get, what my, get my drip. Number one. <laughs> number one, number one, number one, number one. Everybody have the right to protest. But they shouldn't have the right to protest mess. Protest the start mess. That should be banned. Number two, everybody have a right to defend themselves. If you're Antigua, if you're the neo Nazis, if you're the Ku Klux Klan, if you're the alt-right white nationalists, if you're exciting violence, don't get mad when somebody knock you by and hit you back. Oh, that's wrong. It's a, no. And some people want that. And you're being played on both sides. White supremacists, you're being played on that side. On terrorists, you've been played. You're like the kid who grew up in Islam, uh, radical Islamic terrorism. I call it that. I have no problem calling it that. There are certain people in certain factions that are radical about their Islamic faith and they terrorize people and you grew up in that and you may have grew up under white supremacy hey it's not your fault if somebody did not come in to reprogram your think you just that way it's a sad way it's a horrible way to be but you're that way the only thing you only way you can change it is change it being somebody outside the head is not going to change it it's not going to be hatred and and and, and uh, uh, anger and fear away it's not going to beat prejudice away. It's not going to beat away, beat away racism. It's going gonna, it's gonna to invigorate it. It's going to give it more of a reason to go out and do what it's due. Alright, I'm done. I'm done. Look, white nationalists, black nationalists, Antigua, whoever you are, whatever name you go out, if you're inciting violence, you're wrong. If you're inciting now, that means if you're going out to start it, you're wrong. You should lose your right to protest as an individual. If you're caught up in that mess, you should be losing your right to go out and protest or speak. Because what you're saying and doing is dividing the country and it's not bringing us together. Now, like I said, if somebody going to knock you upside the head, you get your behind up and 
And you ain't going to let nobody do you like that, especially my black people. You ain't going to let nobody over dominate you and, 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 and impose uh, their suppression and oppression of you. No, you ain't going to let that happen. We, we, nah, we, we didn't know the power of numbers before when we were slaves, but we got the power of numbers now. And we're not alone because they're not just attacking blacks. They're attacking Jews, who a lot of black people don't like. But uh, in this situation, you better be friend because... <laughs> you're going to need each other because these white supremacists, radical terrorism, all they care about is their blonde hair, blue eye as the ultra superior and any other color white person is a sub superior person. Anybody else under that are dogs and worthy to be trampled and trashed on. And that's horrible. All right. So um, I'm done with this segment. All right, so I'm letting you know my particular position is you have the right to protest even if you're knuckleheads. Even an idiot has a right to protest. Even a racist have a right to protest. But when they're protesting to incite violence, poking to get people to become violent, or inflicting violence on people, that is wrong and you need to be restricted on your protest and your gathering together in your speech. And yet at the same time, you cannot expect to go out there and press hard because you feel you got a little backbone now because Trump was president. Hey, I'm a black man. I know what it's like when Obama became president the first time. My chest was up in the air. My back was straight. And I felt like the king of the world because we had a black president in the office. But I was bamboozled, hoodwinked. Ran them up because in 2012, I found that my black president was down with the Wall Street corporate white donors doing their bidding, killing more black and brown people in o overseas and other countries than any white president has done uh, in the modern history today. And have done nothing for black people specifically, done everything he could for the LGBT community, but never did something concrete for black people in general. Same thing with Loretta Lynch as Attorney General. Same thing with Eric Holder. Two black individuals, a black man and a black woman, held the Attorney General post and did not um, help with mass incarceration, did not help reduce uh, the uh, schedule on marijuana to get brothers out of jail. It's a lot of things that they could have did, but they didn't do. All right. Anyway, I'm done. All right. So I'm letting you know if you're going to invoke violence, you should not be having the ability to freely protest and speak out with hate speech. And if you are there invoking violence, don't be surprised if somebody don't defend themselves and fight your behind and crack your skull. Now I myself I'm a peace loving man and I tried to give the, I tried to do the diplomatic way first. But if you're gonna habitually harp on me, then hey, I'm gonna take up for myself. Anyway, I'm done. Robert Brown, Bob TV, Freedom on Fire, I'll holler at you later, peace. Hey, this is your boy Bob TV with Freedom on Fire and Rob Report. I want to thank you for watching the webcast. Make sure you share these um, segments all across your social media network. Um, like and share, subscribe, and maybe I invite a couple other people to do the same thing. Uh, you make the difference. I also want to thank you for those who support this channel through Patreon. Uh, whether it's 10, 50 cent to $50 million, I, I, it goes right back into what we do here. Uh, so like the lights that you're looking at right now, that's because of something that you did. So I really appreciate it. I want to thank my man Veggie Matic for the Blue Yeti mic, one of the top microphones out right now. Um, he knew I needed the mic, so he blessed me with it. So all of you guys make the difference into this channel growing, and I really want to appreciate you for that. Also, by all means, again, continue to uh, share your comments um, at the bottom of each video. Just don't get so visceral to the people who may disagree with me or may disagree with you. This calling out name stuff, um, that's not for this channel. So please try not to call people names, personal names. Now you can call some of the stuff they talk about crap. I say that. But, uh, uh, but just don't attack people personally. Uh, words really hurt when you start attacking people personally because these people really believe these things. And you're not gonna take away their belief 
by calling them names, so please don't do that on this channel. But nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. We're shooting for 2,000 now, uh, so I need your help. So um, as my pastor would say, reach one, teach one. I mean, let's reach out. You got the information, make sure you share with other people and try to get them to subscribe to the channel so we can grow and expand on Bob TV. Freedom on fire, Rob Report, peace.